Hey guys, my name is Wilson. Today we're going to be talking about how do you calculate your food cost. Now, first and foremost, why is food cost so important? There are basically three types of costs that would determine whether your business goes bankrupt or whether you would be having a thriving restaurant business. The three types of expenses are your rental costs, your labor costs, and your food costs. So these three things adds up to close to 75 to 90 percent of your revenue. Okay, so what that means is that if you can control one sector and one component of this cost, you're going to be able to maximize the amount of profit that you can bring home. Okay, and in the food and beverage world nowadays, the margins are already thin enough. We're talking about five to ten percent. So what that means is if you learn how to calculate and when you learn how to calculate food costs, you're going to be able to better control this item. And when you can better control this item, that means that you can have a bigger pot and bigger profit that you can bring up, which is the reason why today we're going to be talking about how are you going to be able to calculate your food cost. So now that you understand the importance of why food cost is so important, I also want to bring to you the three benefits of actually understanding it, okay? It is because the first benefit is so that way you can strategize and engineer a new menu. There are items on your menu that once you calculate the food cost, you understand and you would know that does not make sense because these items, every time you sell one, you're losing money. Because for example, if the cost of your burger is like $8, but you're selling it for only $12, then that means that your cost of goods sold is way too high to sustain this product. That means you're not making money from this product. Aside from cost of goods sold, you also need to account for your labor, your rent and everything. And when you count everything within this item, it's not making money, then why are you selling it? Same thing goes with actually creating new items. To give you an example, whenever we create ice cream flavors, we always look at, we always start from how much of a budget can we work towards? How much of a budget do we have to create this new item? So for example, if we sell our ice cream or a product, a dessert menu item that is caught retailing for $8, then we know we can't spend more than $2 whenever we're testing this new product, whether it be uh, the toppings, whether it be the ice cream base, whether it be the presentation itself, everything adding up cannot be more than $2 because now we understand our food costs. Whereas if you do not understand food costs, you'd be putting in tons of topping just to make this ice cream stand out, make it look super amazing, yet the cost is $5. How can you make any money from that? You can't, which is the reason why understanding food costs is so, so important. On the same token, the second benefit of truly understanding your food costs is that you can actually run proper promotions. And what I mean by that is, if you're running promotions, so many of us are running promotions, but we don't even know if we're making money or not. If you are, every time you sell a product, every time you sell an item, it's not making money, then why are you running that promotion? It's a lose-lose game, okay? Your clients and your customers are so used to you running promotions that they won't purchase from you unless you run a promotion. And at the same time, you keep running promotions that are not generating you any profits, then what's the point? A lose-lose scenario. On the same token, if you understand food costs, if you understand, for example, a piece of cookie, it costs you around 25 cents to 50 cents to make, and you retail and you sell it out to the public for $5. That's a really healthy margin that you have. And if you want to use your cookie as a promotional item where, you know what, come in, buy a cookie for 50% off, tons of people will be flooding in. They're gonna, you're gonna charge them 250, yeah, it takes you 50 cents to make, and you still have a ton of margins to play with. You still are able to benefit from that and to be able to profit from that which is the reason why you can be very strategical when you're running these promotions that half price cookies and when people come in for their cookie, they're gonna order a cup of milk, which you can charge at full price. And that's a very, very smart way of running promotions, all because of the fact that we understand cost of goods sold, food costs. The third and final benefit that I'm gonna be sharing with you today is that you can actually make more profits by understanding the seasonality of the cost of the goods that you're buying. So for example, produce, fruits. Whenever we have any summer promotions, we usually buy our strawberries or mangoes at the peak, 
at the most supply time that the produce is being um, harvested we buy a ton of it and then we cut it up and then we freeze it so then that way we have a, a ample supply of ingredients why do we do that it is because mangoes don't always come that cheap usually within a month time they become more and more expensive as the season fades on but because of the fact that we understand that we understand cost of goods sold we're able to strategize buy them in bulk buy them and store them and then now throughout the season we can actually control costs and thus bringing us much more profits at the end of the day so now that you understand why it's so important some of the benefits and with more advanced strategies of how to use food costs we're going to dive right into how are you going to be able to calculate your food costs for your restaurant before i do that i'm going to explain to you a little bit more about food costs food cost is basically usually comes in a percentage form okay um, and what i mean by that is usually it's the cost of making that food item it's the direct cost okay what i mean by that is inventory all the ingredients that it takes to create that item we're talking about for example if we're talking about ice cream okay we're talking about the cups we're talking about the napkins we're talking about um, the dry ice that we have we're talking about the milk we're talking about the powders the sugar the topping these are all the ingredients that goes into making this item Okay? And on top of that, we need to add in the direct cost of preparing the ice cream. So what I mean by that is, before we actually have that ice cream, we need to create a mix. A mix that we can pour into that ice cream machine that churns out soft serve. Now, for us to create, for us to have the labor to create this box of mix, that itself is a direct cost that goes into creating the item, not just the ingredient cost. So for example, I need to have a labor, I need to find a staff to, to pour all the ingredients in this bucket, blend it up, and then pour it into the machine to make the ice cream. For example, if it takes my staff an hour to create this product, then I would add this hour into um, our food cost as well. To give you a better example with numbers, so just to simplify everything, Okay, the, in an ideal world, the ideal food cost of, of how much it takes. 50 cents for the cone, okay? 50 cents for the milk, 50 cents for making um, all the toppings, and another 50 cents for the person that creates that bucket of mix, okay? And how do we get that 50 cents for the person that makes, creates that mix? Well, if it takes that person an hour to create the mix, and if the mix can create, let's say, 30 cups of ice cream, then we can just divide 30 with that person's hourly wage. So for example, if he gets paid $10 an hour, then we use 10 divided by 30, which comes out to be 30 cents. Then we would add that to the cost of goods sold. So for the sake of this example, we, talk, we, we said that that is 50 cents. So if you add everything up, that is $2 for making that cup of ice cream. That becomes your cost of goods sold. That becomes how much it costs. Now you use that number, divide it by how much you actually sell the product for. So for example, if we sell the ice cream for $5 to the public, then we use $2 divided by $5 to get our cost of goods sold. Typically speaking, cost of goods sold should range from, I would say, 15 to 30%. 30% is the maximum that we would want for cost of goods sold. And at the end of the day, the higher the cost of goods sold, the less profit that we can make, the less profit that we can put into our pockets. So now that you understand in an ideal world how much cost of goods sold are for that ice cream, 20% is what we're talking about. But in reality, we have not taken it into two big concerns. Number one is wastage, and the second one is theft. In an ideal world, this we don't we take out. But in reality, this happens all the time. These two components, food wastage and theft, is always something that's gonna happen. And what I mean by that is, for example, if we created a batch of ice cream, and that whole batch is $20, if we retail it for $5, how much can we make? In theory, we're going to be able to make $100 in revenue. That equates 
to 20%. But because of the fact that, you know what, uh, when we're cleaning the machine, we, we ended up wasting a bunch of ice cream. And in turn, those ice cream that we wasted cannot be sold as revenue. So what that means is, maybe our revenue becomes $90, right? On the same token, if I'm the, the staff and my friend comes in and then I'm like, hey, you know what, um, Jason, um, thanks for coming in. I'm gonna give you a free cup of ice cream. Here you go, but we never charged them. That means that for the same amount of ingredient, which is $20 of ingredient, I did not receive one order, which is $5. So that brings down the revenue. In addition to all the wastage, so you can now imagine in reality that maybe the revenue that we bring in is only $80 instead of $100. With this calculation, we use $20 divided by $80 to, guess, to get the real, actual cost of goods sold, which becomes 25% versus, in an ideal world, a 20% cost of goods sold. The reason why I'm explaining the ideal food cost and the actual food cost to you is because you need to understand, in theory, everything is perfect. However, our job as owners, we need to understand what is realistic, what is it, and how we can control the cost of goods sold. So now that we understand the two biggest components, food wastage and theft, we're gonna have to keep a lot of close eyes to maintain and to take this element and to prevent these things from happening to ensure that our cost of goods sold is at an optimal percentage. Now, how can we do that? Then we can have better processes, for example, cleaning, better processes of optimizing the food ingredients that we use, better processes to understand and to prevent people from stealing and giving away and comping different meals. This all acts up to, to your profits. So at the end of the day, you need to make sure, and why are we even calculating food costs? The reason why we're calculating food costs is for us to be aware of how much we're actually spending. Now, how do you calculate actual food costs? All you have to do is, in the beginning of the month, check your inventory. At the end of the month, check your inventory again. Take the difference, then that's the amount of ingredients that you have used throughout the month, and you're gonna be able to use that to benchmark it against the revenue you're able to generate uh, for each food item and then you're gonna have better understanding of the actual food costs. And for you to understand it, now you can manage it properly. So then that way, you can gain more profits into your pockets. So there you go. We just talked about the importance of understanding your food costs. We just talked about how do you calculate your ideal food costs versus your actual food costs. As a rule of thumb, we want to be able to aim for a maximum 30% of an actual food cost because anything higher, you're gonna be left with no margins to play with. So many times we're, we're actually looking at our bank account, we're like, wow, we're making tons of money on paper, but in our bank account, if money's not showing up. It is because of our expenses outbeats the revenue that we bring in. Just because we make $10,000 doesn't mean it all goes into our pocket. We need to pay for tons of money for rent, tons of money for labor, tons of money for cost of goods sold. So our job as owners, as restauranteurs, is to control this cost, minimize it to below 30, so then that way we can have a healthy margins for us to take home. So I really hope you've enjoyed this video. I've, the only thing I really ask for is for you to smash the like button. That's the only thing that really helps me along this whole YouTube journey. If you guys have any questions, leave it in the comment section below. And if you wanna learn more about how do you understand building a restaurant, how do you engineer better menus so then that way you can profit a ton, how do you have like more than a thousand loyal fans so then that way you don't need to worry about the competitors around the block, or just understand my journey on building an ice cream empire, then definitely check out in the link below. I created this course of something that I, I've done for the last 10 years. So definitely check out in the link below. Otherwise, follow along this whole journey. I'll see you guys in the next video.